Hi guys, this is Jackie from TechJackie.com. We're coming to help with an SEO. First of all, if you're brand to this channel, make sure to press the subscribe button down below so when I release a new SEO video like this, you get notified. In this quick presentation, I'm about to show you how to recover from any Google algorithm updates and why your site got hit in the first place. You see, for the past one to two years, Google has been releasing lots of known and unknown algorithm updates, and every single day, it's just getting more and more random and unreasonable. Well, for the past one to two years, anyone doing SEO out there might have, you know, experienced some roller coaster, um, um, you know, experience when it comes to trying to do SEO for their website. You know, every single day, every now and now and then, we're seeing, you know, things shifting, shifting around here and there, and as the days goes by, you know, it's just getting more and more random and unreasonable, right? Where, you know, high quality website might get hit without any reasons, right? And I've seen this all the time, right? Multiple Facebook groups where innocent SEOs, though they have done everything quote unquote high quality and yet still got hit by these algorithm updates. I'm not saying that every algorithm update uh, makes sense or not, uh, nor I'm saying that every algorithm update uh, is doing the right thing. But what I'm say, trying to say here is it doesn't really matter what each update does as long as, you know, you understand uh, what it takes to really recover or what it takes to really stay on always on the top of the game, then you will still be able to recover, right? Or at, or at least if you understand wh why you actually got hit in the first place, then, you know, you you will still have a higher chance of actually thriving and, you know, having success trying to recover your website or actually never get hit in the first place, right? I mean, I'm not saying like forever, but sometimes, you know, you can go years until you actually get hit by any of these updates. But, you know, in the reality here is trying to figure out what each algorithm update targets is a waste of time. And this is simply because nowadays, roughly about 95% of Google's system, the algorithms, is powered by machine learning, right? And what essentially it does here is, it combines different signals and mix and match different signals to kind of score your website. Moreover, machine learning can also combine and even invent or come up with new signals, right? Where you try to actually rank website. So it kind of it is is quite chaotic out there, right? Right? There's really no one linear way of thinking of how the uh, of what the algorithm actually does in each update. In fact, even multiple Google employees and you know engineers have said that. They don't really know what happens in each algorithm update. What the, what the engineers do nowadays is they just feed the system or the algorithm with the outcome that they want, and then they just let the machine does its job, right? Based on certain condition and certain um, things that they have uh, programmed earlier. So it's always, you know, in a consistent learning phase, and it's always, you know, trying to test things out to really, you know, uh, rank website. And that's why trying to figure out what each algorithm targets is simply a waste of time because the truth is no one actually knows. Now, based on my experience working on hundreds of websites and you know doing multiple tests, along with studying about how machine learning and artificial intelligence works, I've been able to consistently recover sites that get hit like this, where the site got hit by the May core update and then later on recovered um, in September core update. And this, where the site got hit in, um, by the Google product reviews update back in 2021. And within a few weeks after that, I was able to recover this site fully and even brought it to the next level, right? By simply understanding what uh, the reasons why the site got hit in the first place and to follow certain SOPs or, you know, to certain structure or way of thinking of how to recover websites. Now, of course, in this video, I'm not, I will not be able to share like entirely every SOPs and, you know, the steps that I take, but I'll give you the blueprint or, you know, the things that you need to understand as to why you got hit in the first place and what you should really do next, right? So here's the four reasons why sites get hit in the first place. First, there's something horribly wrong with your technical aspects. The first thing that, you know, most people tend to, you know, neglect here is to check their technical SEO. You see, Technical SEO isn't a big factor when it comes to ranking your website, but certain technical aspects such as, let's say, if you have a lot of, you know, 500 errors, essentially means, you know, lots of server errors on multiple pages on your website, 
you know, then there's a problem, right? Googlebot can't really crawl and index your website properly in the first page, in the first place. Or, you know, if let's say um, you have lots of low quality pages in your in, in the index from your website, which essentially is called as bloat index, this can also lower down your entire website quality, right? So certain technical aspects um, are very important and can also be a deciding factor when it comes to the reason as to why you got here in the first place or not. Now, the second reason that I've seen is also one of the most common reasons as well is no proper off-page and branding strategies. When we talk about off-page SEO, people tend to only think about backlinks, but in the reality, it's more beyond that, right? Google has really evolved itself into more or less like an entity-based uh, search engine where you know it tries to understand what an entity or what the website is all about in general and try to figure out you know whether the website is has enough expertise enough authoritativeness and enough trustworthiness to try to rank it in the first place and also you can uh, when it comes to off page itself there are also things called user experience or user signals that are very important because you know things like click through rate dwell times and you know time on site all the user actions and general user signals are what also Google take into consideration. And essentially, you know, you might have even noticed sometimes you know, where a website just ranks so well on the first page without, you know, good backlinks or even with, with mediocre type content. That's because the entire website's user experience is very good and it has lots of positive user feedback on it. So, you know, this is also one of the most common reasons why a site gets hit is they simply don't have enough, you know, good user experience or good user feedback compared to their competitors. And if the majority of your pages are, you know, ha not having a good um, user signals in general, then your entire website sinks. Or if a website doesn't really have a proper branding strategies or proper, you know, if if not many people actually are, you know, giving them like a website a good recommendations or the website isn't doesn't really have you know, good branding in general, then the website simply gets hit. Like all these are relative to your competitors, of course. If you're in a, you know, in a medium competition or low competition type niche, it, it might not be matter. But if you're in a, you know, working on things like, you know, a CBD or casinos, all that, then you got to always stay on top of the game. Now, the third reason as to why website gets hit by algorithm updates is over optimizations. And this is both on page and off page over optimizations. Now, this is not any normal over optimizations where you know you simply like keyword stuffing or anchor text over optimizations. Like I said, everything is now based on machine learning. So it's not just you know simply like this and then that anymore, but it's more or less of multiple algorithm algorithms try to figure out as to whether or not your website is over optimized or not by actually looking at different aspects of your website, right? So for example, let me give you an example here. Let's say you have an over-optimized anchor text, but you have a really good user signals across multiple pages on your website, and you have non-optimized content, it essentially means your content isn't really like fully optimized for SEO, then the algorithm might think that you are not over-optimized and hence you're passed. Whereas let's say you your content has like high keyword density and lots of over-optimized anchor text, and you also have high link velocity, then the algorithms might actually start thinking that you are over-optimized and hence you fail, right? So it's, it's basically the combination of different aspects of your web website and the different algorithms trying to kind of weigh in different aspects to try to understand whether or not you're over-optimized, right? And this is pro this also makes sense or actually explain as to why you know uh, high authority websites can get away with many many things right because high authority websites uh, although they might have lots of you know keyword uh, high keyword density or a lot of over optimized anchor text but you know because they have a lot of other good factors that can overshadow all of their bad factors they can get away with all of this, right? So if you're just a small Thai website and you know, you're know you not be careful with you know 
um, how you do SEO in general, you can actually over optimize, right? And fourth reason is, and also very common reasons, well, and what many people don't like to really look at, but it's, a, it's sometimes a big thing here is there's a huge shift in the keyword intent, right? So when you do any search for any keywords, you will see, you know, different types of intent or different type of pages ranking for that keyword. Now, uh, almost every algorithm update since Google tries to always match the best pages to the best type of intent, they will, nor, they will you know, consistently change the SERPs or the intent shift the intent try to match what users are looking for. So for example, if you do a search for a roofing SEO, you'll see that the top ranking results is a commercial intent or essentially the page that offers roofing SEO service. The second result also the same thing. Third result is also the same thing. But when you go to the fourth result, you see that is an information type intent or a guide essentially explaining you how to do SEO for roofing website. Now, this is what we call a mixed intent, um, mixed intent keyword, where a keyword can give multiple intent or, you know, can give different type of pages, different type of content ranking for this. Now, if you actually do a real search for this, uh, you'll see that lower down, like position six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you'll see all of them are information type content. So it's a mixed type, right? Commercial and informational. Now, sometimes for your keyword, it could be easier where, you know, the entire search results are all commercial or informational. So that's easy. So let's say you used to rank well, you know, for an informational type content, but then another an update comes, then your ranking start, you know, actually, so you went to the second page. You have to actually, you know, check and see if there's any shift in the intent of your keywords, right? And here's which also leads us to how to actually recover from Google algorithm updates, right? So I'm gonna give you these four steps to actually, you know, uh, do it in a proper way to kind of give you an idea of what you have to do. So first to do a perform a full site audit, right? So you have to go beyond traditional audits where, you know, just looking like things like if you have title tags or, you know, if you have a 301 redirect in place or things like that. True, those things are still important, but those are what we call as traditional audits. Nowadays, you have to go beyond the traditional audits and by looking at things like your EAT, right, your author expertise, um, your your entities in general, doing an entity audit, right, all this stuff. So when it comes to full audit, I'm going to be releasing a free audit checklist, a free complete, um, you know, advanced SEO audit checklist very soon. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, on my channel, make sure you press the subscribe button right now. So when I release that free SEO audit checklist, you'll be the first to grab it, right? And which will go beyond the traditional audits. After you do a full site audit and you make sure that you fix everything that you've done co incorrectly or the things that you could easily improve, next you have to check your analytics and branding, right? So make sure to check your analytic tools such as, you know, um, Google Analytics and maybe tools like Hotjar to really try to understand what people actually do when they land on your website. You need to make sure that you always provide the best user experience. You always provide the answers that users are looking for across your website and check your branding, right? Do a quick search for your brand. See, you know, if you're seeing, you know, social profiles coming up, if you're seeing, you know, that positive reviews about your websites coming up, all those stuff. Make sure you have a proper branding strategies in place. After that, you also need to identify pages that you got hit and check for shifts in the intent. So what you can easily do here is you can go to Google Search Console and you know filter out for the past 30 days and see and see you know which page actually you uh, saw a, a dip in impressions. And then you can do a quick search for your main keyword for that page and see if there's any shift in intent or is it, if the intent has changed for your keyword. If it has changed, then what you have to do is you have to simply rewrite the content and then, you know, republish it. If not, then, you know, then you have to move on to the next step, right? So let's say you have performed a full site audit using, you know, my SEO checklist, or you can do any, use any other checklist. You make sure that you have a proper, you, your analytics are good and you have proper branding strategies. You identify that there's really no shift in your intent. Then the last step is to obviously add in new positive signals for Google to reprocess your website. So after you do step one, two, and three, the fourth step 
to actually start the recovering process is to add the positive signals to Google consistently, right? So you can think of like adding, you know, more good, high quality content, uh, keyword building, high quality links, and simply, you know, making sure that you, you, you're you building out a proper brand and, you know, setting lots of good positive user signals to your website across the board. So if you're able to provide Google with consistent positive flow of signals over a period of time and making sure that your site is is free from any errors and everything and the intent is on point, um, over a period of time, you'll see your site start recovering from any algorithm updates. And I can guarantee you that if you do it correctly, you'll see a full recovery, right? When it comes to the core updates, you might have to wait till the next core updates to roll out before you start seeing the full recovery. But in the process, in, in between, you start seeing, you know, um, you start seeing some improvements around, along the way. Whereas, whereas if it's other type of algo updates, then you, you can easily quickly see good results if you um, do everything right, right? So here's the full st uh, four steps checklist that you can use to actually recover from any uh, update. And uh, make sure to stay tuned or to wait for my free SEO audit checklist that I'll be giving away for free um, to kind of help you perform a full site audit and see if you have anything missed out, right? So uh, that's all for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. That's all for it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.